Dune, part two. It's in theaters now. What I think about it, I'm going to tell you. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Let's get into it. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing well. And if you're new here, welcome. We do these movie reviews, movie rankings. We cover major movie news. And, of course, we cover the Oscar race, the Oscar season, as it's almost here. So if any of those topics sounds interesting to you, make sure to check us on out and subscribe as we get towards that 1,000 subscriber mark. And I would love to have you along for that journey. But with all that done and said and done and out of the way, let's get into Dune Part 2. This movie is being talked about with high praise throughout the industry, throughout the world, frankly, for the people who have seen it. It has a 97 or 98 on Rotten Tomatoes. It's the highest ranked movie on IMDb. It's pretty high on Letterboxd. I, everybody I know that I follow in the movie space absolutely loves this movie. And while I don't think I loved it that much, it is one of the best looking films I have ever seen. And that is because of two people, Denis Villeneuve and Greg Frazier, his cinematographer. This cinematography here in here alone is it's, it's just mind-blowing. It, it's incredible. To me, it's my favorite part. It makes this world. You're back in Arrakis. We feel right, uh, right into the world. We feel like we're a part of it. It leaves off right, or it starts right where Dune Part 1 left off. And it is just tremendous how you feel like what you are seeing is real yes cgi is used it does not feel like cgi it feels like everything there is practical and that is because of the amazing vfx team on this as well as the cinematographer greg frazier so the technical team behind dune part two is the best part of this movie for me what did i think of this overall story well i'm not one who knows the dune books i when I saw the first Dune, at first I was like, okay, it's good. And then I rewatched it uh, before I saw part two, and I'm glad I did uh, because I understood more of part two. But also I have a new, um, a new love, I would say, for that first Dune filming. Uh, I, I do think it's pretty good, and I do not think it's boring by any means, as that is some of the complaints I would say about the first one. But in this one... Yeah, I don't see it boring at all. It comes in at 2 hours and 45 minutes, and it just flies on by. I feel like it could have been another hour long, and I wouldn't have cared. In fact, when the movie was over, I wanted even more. We'll get into why in a little bit here. But first off, I just want to say the performances in here are incredible. And that's what we're going to talk about first here. It's led, of course, by Timothy Chalamet, who does an incredible job as Paul Atreides here. I mean... The, the character arc, the character building we see of Paul Atreides and what Timothy Chalamet brings to that as an actor, there is a darker side. There is a transition of who Paul is in this film, and he does an incredible job of getting there. And I have never seen him at the length that I saw him in this movie. And it's different from what he did in Wonka completely, which is the last thing I saw him in. But he is just a phenomenal actor, is an outstanding here. But Zendaya in here is fantastic as she just steals the show, in my opinion. I think her performance is just tremendous. And I'm so glad we got more of her character in this movie as she really is, uh, I would say, one of the most important characters in this film. And to me, she was the key takeaway. Of course, we have returning Josh Brolin, Dave Bautista is in here, Rebecca Ferguson, who has a way bigger role, as well as Javier Bardem, who is a scene stealer and sometimes the uh, comedic relief here. He has great, peccable timing with his comedy, and I love what we were able to see from his character of Skills, Shillsguard, Skillsguard. I'm not great on pronunciations, people. Um, and then I was very excited to see Rebecca Ferguson get more of a spotlight here because I think she's a tremendous actress. And where we see her character go uh, it is uh, interesting, to say the least. Uh, me watching it, I was confused a little bit by her being this uh, Reverend Mother uh, type role. 
But, um, you know, I, I did at the end like it, and I got where it was going, and I think her acting in this film is just tremendous. My favorite uh, scene between two people is with Josh Brolin and Timothy Chalamet. I, I just love the Josh Brolin character in here, and I think he does a fantastic job bringing it to life. And I love the connection between him and Paul, because obviously Paul lost his father in part one, and he doesn't really have many of his friends left of his old life and Josh Brolin's character in here is basically the only one standing uh, besides his own mom. So it's very cool to see that relationship dynamic back in it. We of course have Stellan Skarsgård back in here. I just, I love this guy. I, he's a phenomenal actor. He was great in part one. I wish we got a little bit more of the Baron in this one than we did, but with what Stellan Skarsgård had to do, he knocked it out of the park. Dave Bautista is back in here as well. And he was fantastic in this movie and then we have a scene stealer mr austin butler oscar nominee austin butler is in this movie joining the cast with florence Pugh and christopher walken all three of these actors do a tremendous job although i wish we got more with all of their characters actually uh which is kind of one of the negatives i have the film i wish we could spend more time with them and you know i almost gave away a spoiler i'm not going to do that but I, yeah, I really enjoyed seeing these three new actors come in as they brought just tremendous acting performances to this already incredible dude ensemble. The story in this film, obviously it's a continuation from where part one left off. I was expecting it to kind of be complete in a way. And at the end of this movie, I do still feel like it's kind of open-ended and I'm not exactly sure... Uh, what some things mean. Maybe I do probably have to see it another time to understand that, but I do wish it was a little bit more um, kind of wrapped up in a way, uh, although I, I believe a part three will be coming, and I think Denis Villeneuve will be back at that director's chair as well, um, so maybe it will be wrapped up at that point. I think the character arcs in here for the story were brilliant, and by far my favorite part of the story telling in here and I do think my only criticism is the ending of the film and how they decided to go that route. Uh, I just wish it was a little bit more wrapped up than uh, the open-ended that they kind of left it to be. But at the end of the day, I mean, the action in this movie is phenomenal. The score in here is incredible. The dialogue, the screenplay is so well done. I mean, I'm looking at this film, I'm hearing what I hear, and I'm like, the Oscar nominations this movie is going to get is going to be so well deserved. A thing I said in my out of theater reaction is temper your expectations. Because whenever you hear uh, so much praise about a film, it is hard to, you know, not have that affect the movie when you're watching it. So when you are hearing that it's one of the best sci-fi films ever, it's in the top five of some of the past films that have come out in the past decade, it's just, you know, all the praise that it's getting, try to leave that at the door as much as possible when you go into this movie so it doesn't affect it. Because even though I wasn't like the biggest fan of Dune Part 1, so when I was walking in Dune Part 2, yes, I didn't think it was going to be fantastic, but I did think it was going to be some of the best sci-fi I ever heard or have ever seen just because of the noise around it. And I tried to leave that door as much as I could, but sometimes you just can't help yourself and it does affect the movie in a more, negative is too strong of a word, but for lack of a better term, it does affect it sometimes in a negative way. And that did happen with me for a little bit here in the film. But I mean, if I'm honest, I still had a great time walking out of it. And I do think it's a great film. So with that all being said, I have so much more I want to say, but it is spoilery. So maybe I'll do a spoiler discussion, but it kind of depends on how this video does. But I'm going to be remembering Dune Part 2 for a long time here this year. It's always going to be a movie that's standing out. It's obviously the best part or the best film of the year by far. Um, and it's going to be hard for other films to top it. I really do think that. So at the end of the day, Dune Part 2 is a great, fantastic sci-fi movie, and I'm going to give Dune Part 2 a score of 8.5 out of 10. I am assuming that that score is probably going to rise after I go back and rewatch it, 
but I just haven't had the chance to do that yet, and I wanted to get my review out for you guys since I did put my Out of the Theater reaction up on Thursday. So with that all being said, let me know your thoughts on the film down below in the comments. What did you think of Dune 2? Have you seen it yet? What do you think of a possible Part 3 if they do end up doing that? I think they are. This film's getting rave reviews. I think it's going to get a great box office return for the studio, so I think Warner Brothers is going to have no problem at all uh, greenlighting a Part 3. That I think will be the end, and I think it should, but I really just want them to wrap up the story. I want them to, that, that so just some of the negatives, you know, wrap up the story for me. I wish we got more time with some of these characters, so I want more time with some of them in the part three. And the love story here between Paul and Chani is brilliant, but with how their relationship was handled in Act 3 and some of Act 2 in this movie when Paul makes a certain decision and you can tell that Zendaya's character doesn't agree with it. I don't think that was really laid out as great as I wanted it to be. I was a little confused as to why she felt the way she did. And there is a complexity between the two and there is a different view of uh, opinion. And there is a sort of, um, I would say... Uh, cockiness or, or just arrogance, frankly, that I think the two of them both have, but they have it towards each other because they do care and love each other. So, uh, you know, it's a very interesting dynamic that they have in this film, and I just wish that was explored a little bit better, so I hope that gets cleaned up a little bit in the part three. But anyway, uh, Dune Part 2, 8.5 out of 10. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and make sure to stay tuned to the channel for my Oscars uh, live reaction when I do that on, of course, the Oscars night. But I will be doing a final Oscar prediction video as well before the Oscars on March 10th. So with that being said, guys, my name is Tyson. Until the next one, I'll catch you then.